All right, four, six. Okay, so with your partner, you're going to figure out which graph is periodic. Periodic means it's going to have a shape that keeps repeating. Okay, which one is periodic? Yeah, which one is periodic? So you're going to have to use your graphing calculator to graph. Again, make sure your calculator is in radian, not in degrees. And please be careful with your squares. Remember, you got to know which, where the squares should go. I think the way it's written should be OK. Um, this one, just know that it's sine x and then plus x squared, not sine x plus x squared. Okay. All right, so work with your partner. Which one is periodic? OK, hopefully you guys were able to graph. So which one is periodic? C. Yes, C is the only one that is periodic. So let's say you don't have a calculator, and you need to verify that it is periodic. How would you do that? It's kind of like the same idea as if you are proving something is odd or even. You have a formula. So if you want to check to see something is periodic or not, you make f of x equals to f of x plus 2 pi. So it's saying that if it is periodic, it should repeat itself in the same place after 2 pi. So then the function and uh, 2 pi later, it should look exactly the same. So since we found out that C is periodic, we're going to prove that it is periodic. So we have sine x squared. <clears throat> we need to show that this function is going to be exactly the same if we add 2 pi later. So if we, um, oops, sorry. If we add or change x into x plus 2 pi, we're going to say that it looks exactly the same as the original function. So uh, we need to uh, think about this a little bit. OK, so how often does sine repeat itself? Hmm? 2 pi. So then we can say that 2 pi later is going to be exactly the same value. Remember that one day where we did like, what was it like 9999 pi over 2 and then find sine and all that stuff? And we said every time you have a 2 pi, it just, we ignore it because it's exactly the same. Yeah? So then we can just say that that part is just irrelevant. Then we have sine x squared. So then that is exactly the same as the original function. So then we said, we basically prove that it is periodic. If you change x plus 2 pi in any of the other ones, you're not going to get the same thing back. So for a, it's not going to be the same thing because of this x squared. And then this one, you're going to get a weird binomial square thing. So not that one either. OK, let's try one yourself. Prove that sine cube x is periodic. Let's talk about sine cube x a little bit. Sine cube x is not in your calculator. Like you can't type that straight into the calculator. So what you have to do is write it this way. Sine x, whole thing cubed, like that. This is not the same as sine x cubed, okay? So they're not the same. So sine cube x means take the whole sine function and then cube it. So three sine functions times each other. So please be careful. Anyways, prove it um, peri uh, algebraically that it is um, periodic, which is a super fast proof. So you're proving sine x plus 2 pi cubed is just going to give you sine x cubed. OK, 
Okay, so this is a very fast proof. All you do is just say to yourself that sine repeats itself every 2 pi. So this 2 pi is irrelevant. Therefore, this is just sine x cubed. Okay, next, we're going to analyze a um, trig function, but we're going to change it a little bit. So in this section, we're changing all the trig functions that you have learned in a kind of a weird way. We're going to add them together. We're going to put absolute value on it. We're going to cube it, you know, that kind of stuff. We're just trying to see how does that look like. <clears throat> so we're going to take tangent x, and we're going to put absolute value on it. So in your mind, I want you to imagine how it looks like. Can you imagine a tangent x, how tangent looks like? Okay, so tangent x looks like this, right? Now, I want you to think about what absolute value does to the function. Uh-huh, so absolute value does what to the function? Or what does absolute value do in general? Make things positive, right? So the absolute value, is absolute value on the x or on, is it on the y? For this one, absolute value tangent x, is the absolute value on the x or is it on the y? Yes, it's y. Oh. Mm, all right. We have a, we have a problem. Uh, x is this part, right? Y is going to be the whole function. So this absolute value goes on the whole function. So it's making the, it's, the absolute value is on the Y. Okay, now let's think about it. Absolute value on the Y means it's going to make all the Y values positive. Therefore, in that graph, you should not see any negative Y values. Can you guys guess how the graph will look like? Yes? Uh, just be the top part? Not quite. Almost. Yes, it will flip up. So all the negative numbers now becomes uh, the other way. Because you can't have a negative number. So all the negative numbers now become positive, so then everything flips up. Okay, so now that you have a good prediction, go ahead and graph it in your calculator and see if you actually see that graph. Uh, I'm going to show you how to graph absolute value. There's an absolute value function. So you would uh, go to um, math, the math button, and then you go to the right. So click right one, and then you, now you're under NUM for numbers. The first one says ABS. ABS means absolute value. So if you just click on that, that one, it's going to give you the absolute value bars. Okay, this one's easier to do if you graphed your own tangent graph and looked at them. Um, so your asymptotes are going to be pi over 2, and then this is a negative pi over 2, and it's going to repeat itself every pi. Uh, sorry, that's not pi then. That is 3 pi over 2. So then the domain is going to be x is not equal to the first asymptote you find plus um, pi n. Are you guys okay? If you, you know, <coughs> don't know where all those... Uh, x values are, then you start graphing your tangent graph. So sine over cosine, graph your co cosine, and then look at where the asymptotes are and go from there. Okay, n is an integer. The range is not all real numbers because you flipped everything up. So then this is going to be 0 to infinity, and then period is every pi. Okay, let's have you practice sine x with the absolute value. So that absolute value flips everything up, so now you should see like a bunch of little hills. Um, okay, so for the second one, let's just think about your sine graph, normal sine graph. I'm just going to draw this really quickly because you already know how this looks like. That's 2 pi, that's pi. So with the absolute value, it's going to flip everything up, right? So now you have that. 
So that means the domain is still the same, all real numbers, because we, we never had an asymptote, and it's still not going to have an asymptote. Uh, the range is now going to be stuck between 0 and 1. The period, it was 2 pi, but now you flipped everything up, and then it, that shape keeps repeating, so then it's going to be just pi. All right, now, <laughs> so we're going to do a lot of weird graphs today, like with sine and cosine, and just, you, you have to, like, kind of imagine, like, what is the worst that can happen? What is, what am I going to actually do to this whole thing? Okay, all right. The graph 0.5x plus sine x oscillates between two parallel lines. What are the equations of these two lines? What are they talking about? Okay, so if you were to graph this in your graphing calculator, I'm gonna just tell you how it looks like. It looks like this. <laughs> yes. They're saying that it's really just between two lines. What are those two lines is the question. Okay, talk to your partner, put your brains together. You, you can think of something. <laughs> Think of something. Or if two people, like you can't think of anything, like talk to the people behind you. <laughs> okay, so we know that 0.5x, just 0.5x is going to be here. And what happens is it now has a sine x attached to it, so it's going to make it oscillate. And then when it oscillates, it's going to oscillate between negative 1 and 1. So then the two lines that it's going to be stuck in between has to be 0.5x plus 1 and 0.5x minus 1. Because if you think about your sine x graph, the amplitude is 1. So it can oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's 0.5 because like the lines inside the right? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Another partner work. Uh, you guys have to figure out which one is, looks like a sinusoid. Sinusoid just means something that looks like sine or cosine, has that shape. So which one looks like sinusoid? There are two. Okay, let's vote. <clears throat> How many people think A is a sinusoid? Okay, good. How about B? Okay, C? Yes. Now, you and your partner, try to think about this. I'm basically adding two functions together. Why does A and C create sinusoid and B does not? Okay, so look at the functions you're adding together. Okay, anyone have any clever ideas? Why does A and C become sinusoid and B does not? Yeah? Because they have the same, like, X thing? Like, X thing. Like, because B has three X and there's two X. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. That is correct. <laughs> but maybe a more, <laughs> more pre-calc term <laughs> would be better. Huh? What's that? You don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yes, it has something to do with the period. Yeah. They have to have the same period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, or they have the same uh, B value. So, if they have the same period, they will create another sinusoid. Mm. Hmm? Okay, so now A, B, C, D, you have to determine whether it is or is not a sinusoid. Which one is a sinusoid? Which one is not a sinusoid? Okay, is A a sinusoid? Yes. 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 B? No. no. C? No. D? Yes. Good. Okay, this last part I think is very fun. <laughs> okay, if two sinusoids have the same period, we know that it's going to become another sinusoid. Now, we're going to rewrite that as a sinusoid of something else. 
What does that mean? Okay, so first, uh, this plus this, they have the same period. It's going to become another sinusoid. We're going to write it as a sine graph. Uh, well, oh, um, okay. So if you add these together, you're going to get another graph that looks like this. We're going to say, what is that graph if I just have one equation in just sine only? Okay. Is that? Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to look at your graph, find the amplitude, find the period so you can rewrite that as a sine graph. And hopefully there's no shift. If there's a shift, you got to include uh, that in there uh, too. So we graph them. You have to graph it and look at your amplitude, look at your period. I'm going to give you a hint. The period stays the same. Um, oh, well, yeah. But there is a shift. Okay, did you guys ooh, did you guys find the amplitude? Uh, it's not exactly five. Five point four, five point three eight something. Okay, let's say five point three nine. Um, B again. I'm just gonna give you the yeah straight out. It, it's gonna be exactly the same B. So it's just one. You're adding two of the same periods together, you're going to get another one of the same period. Um, but if you just graph that, it's not going to go through the same point. Right? So you're going to have to have some kind of horizontal shift or phase shift. 